and welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and this I'm The Place. So today we have something very exciting in my opinion because it is my very first wrap up. Uh, I kind of feel like you can't beat a good classic reading wrap up so I'm very pleased to be filming my first one today. Um, just before we get started I'd like to point out that I'm wearing red lipstick as an ode to one of the books that we have here. So I feel like I'm going to be really distracted by this the whole time and I hope Number one, that I don't end up with any lipstick on my teeth. And number two, that it doesn't make my like teeth look yellow. Like, you know, sometimes it can. So less of the rambling on, more of the getting started because I already have a problem with talking way too much about stuff. I don't need all of this added in extra crappy info. I'm gonna go through all of the books in the order that I read them. So I had a reasonably good reading month. I've read eight books and I got quite a decent way into two others. Um, and in terms of the ratings, there were a few disappointments actually, there were quite a few disappointments, but there are a few that um, that I did really enjoy. So I'm pretty happy with what I've read, I feel like I've read reasonably widely. And also to be honest, I'm just glad that I read anything, because unfortunately, like two weeks into the month, I made myself really ill, like I gave myself a really bad migraine for like three or four days. I couldn't really eat anything, I was just being sick and I couldn't read words at all. Um, it was really the worst thing ever because uh, I personally, I get really distracted. I need a lot of stuff to hold my attention. I can't actually just sit still and not do or think about anything. And like when I'm not doing anything, I want to be reading and I physically couldn't read like the words on the page. I find it really, really, really hard to relax <laughs> and just calm down, which is why I got a migraine in the first place because like my coping mechanism is to throw myself into stuff. Um, and I try really hard at everything I do, so it was just, ugh, yeah. Anyway, so I had about a week where I couldn't read anything and I had to really slowly get back into reading. So based on that, I'm pretty pleased that I managed to um, read anything and find some things that I at least enjoyed or got something from. So let's get started. Um, the first three books I have already spoken about as I read them for my Famous Artworks chooses my TBR challenge. So I won't talk about them too much. I will link it down below and put it in the cards for you. The first book that I read was Evelyn Moore's The Loved One. Um, obviously it's by Evelyn Moore, so it's a satirical novel. It's really quite short as well. Um, and in this book, the basic plot is that we are following Barlow, who is a British emigrant to America and is become sort of ostracized by his other well-to-do British peers in America because he decides not to um, sort of pursue the very cutthroat um, careers that they do and engage in their society and instead takes a job as a pet mortician. Um, whilst he's there, his friend dies and he is put in charge of organising the funeral. Um, he goes to a place called Whispering Glades to organise his funeral, which is like a massive, I wouldn't say funeral parlour or undertakers even, um, it's more of a theme park of death in Hollywood and um, he kind of gets swept up in the commercialization of deaths, as you'd expect a satire of the funeral industry um, at, at extremes. I gave this one, I think a 3.5 stars. It was actually kind of laugh out loud, loud funny because it's so ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of just a small fun novel. Um, it's not my favorite thing ever, but I did enjoy it. Um, and it was very easy to read and it's got very cute illustrations in it. Let me do this one. The second book that I read, again, I um, talked about this in my Famous Artworks Choose My TBR video, so if you want more info and want to hear me talking about how much I loved it even more, then please go and check out the link or the cards to find that. Um, so this is The Birds by Talashe Vesas. Um, this book is presenting us with the perspective of a man who's like around 40 called Mattis, um, living in Norway, who does indeed have a learning difficulty. Um, and we see everything from his perspective through his eyes, which means the reading experience is very different. He sees everything um, in quite a visceral way, almost. Words have power and sharpness and feeling. Everything is very tangible. Uh, everything has an extra added meaning. He kind of puts things together almost in a superstitious way. And yeah, at first that perspective can be kind of jarring. It takes you a bit of time to get into it. And it is quite slow, like there's not a lot of plot here. It's mostly looking at and exploring um, Mattis's experience of the world and the way in which the world rejects him. I gave this five stars in the end. Um, 
it's quite deeply sad it does have a tragic ending i think it's um a perspective that we need to read more of it's just really looking at his tragic and impossible attempt at being a man and the way in which society has created no space for, in which he can exist there's a really really touching moment in here where Mattis um, sort of forms a bond with a woodcock that changes its path and flies over his house he, and it just overjoys him this sense of having a friend and someone he can physically communicate with and be understood by and recognized by and appreciated by um so yeah it's just so sad and i love Mattis. i love the way he sees the world like i think it's something to be appreciated and for like for the value that it has as like the gen generic or mass perspective is not the only way of seeing the world so yes i very much love this so the final book that i read for that video was javier marias's um a heart so white the basic plot of this is that we are following juan who is trying to come to terms and understand his father's relationship history following his own marriage um, and sort of the big sort of mystery of his father is that his second wife committed suicide shortly after their honeymoon and we're trying to work out why all of these things have been hidden and what happened. So I gave this book three stars um, because objectively it's not a bad book, it's good. It has a lot of themes that Marias is trying to explore. There is a lot going on here. It's very detailed and there's a lot to unpick. However, it wasn't what I expected. I thought from this kind of synopsis that we were gonna have um, like an unreliable narrator maybe or um, somebody trying to puzzle through lots of secrets and lies and work out what happened and it would be sort of like a literary thriller going into it with this with these expectations kind of did disappoint me probably i would benefit from a second reading to try and work out more what marias is going at but um yeah i just felt like he was trying to do too much it was too sprawling it was unmanageable and it just kind of ruined the experience of reading so the fourth book that i read this month was adele by leila slamani um this is really not the kind of book that I would normally pick up. As you can see, I tend to read sort of modern classics and this is more of a contemporary fiction. However, I just sort of felt like breaking the mould a bit. I'm trying really hard to not read the same sort of things all the time so that I can look at things with a more critical eye rather than just kind of getting blinded by the um, similarities. However, I was intrigued by this because it is looking at female sexuality. So in this book, we're following Adele who is trying to juggle her sex addiction with um, her job, her husband and her son. So like managing all of those and the secrets that come from that, where she is sort of sleeping with lots of men who aren't her husband. Um, I gave this 2.5 stars. Um, yeah, I didn't really like it. So I gave it 2.5 stars. I didn't really like it. I thought it was okay. Um, I was disappointed because I was expecting like a really sharp compelling sort of breath of fresh air look at female sexuality and I didn't get that I feel like it is more about the addiction aspect than the sexuality aspect um but yeah I'll talk about the good things first let's start positively Slamani does touch on the way in which the space that female sexuality is able to occupy is limited and that therefore when it veers away from this general expectation of female sexuality, it's kind of incomprehensible to men and society. And it also sort of talks about the way in which female behaviour is often governed by the expectations of others. So those two interlinking points of um, control over female sexuality. Now, in terms of the bad points, my real problem with this is that this book kind of sits in between offering no explanation for where Adele's sex addiction came from, which is fine because mental health issues, addiction problems can't easily be explained away. Like you shouldn't kind of reinforce the idea that there is one particular thing you need to avoid to not have these problems and that these problems only occur to people who do X or are X or whatever. But then, so she kind of doesn't give you an explanation but then she also sort of pushes towards the idea that Adele's upbringing and childhood and family were the reason. So you end up with this completely unfleshed out, really vague, underdone background on where the sex addiction maybe came from. I just felt that that was really poor. Like either commit to not explaining it or commit to explaining it. Like don't be in between and then just give us a bit of nothing, like give us nothing of either. Um, and then what I found interesting is that Adele 
she seems to come from like a more deprived childhood like a, a poorer family who struggled to get by don't have a very nice apartment um, aren't very nurturing of her all of these things but then she marries into marries a doctor who ha who is very wealthy because he's a doctor and also has um, like wealthy parents so I just sort of thought that was a bit of a poor choice to to choose somebody of that kind of background as the person who has the sex addiction like and it kind of reinforces the idea of people who are up middle to upper class having like better values and being civil particularly when they're like that aspect of her identity is not fleshed out at all we don't get any real sense of how her background or upbringing really filtered into her identity and personality so that was just really disappointing for me um but yeah it was fine but a disappointment really uh, now the next book that i read i don't actually have with me because i read it as an ebook which i know i just said that i can't read audiobooks or ebooks like just a few videos ago which generally still is the rule however um just after i was ill i was kind of getting a bit better and i still couldn't read properly but i found that like putting books on my ipad and really zooming in like massive font made it easier to read but yeah i, I still can't read audiobooks i can't stand them i can't concentrate nah not for me at all but um ebooks i can do like one or two a month uh, so the next one we had was where freedom starts sex power violence me too a verso report so i think this was actually published maybe in 2019 i'm not sure but it's basically it was basically just a collection of previously published and new essays centering around the me too movement or like sexual assault and it was looking at me too from a number of different lenses i think i actually read this pretty much in one sitting it's not very long but it's very compelling and thought provoking you've got lots of little different perspectives to look from and it was almost kind of like an appetizer to thinking critically on the topic notes on a rape story by larissa fam was one of my highlights of um of the collection it's basically um larissa looking back i think a few years after she um wrote something about um a sexual assault and sort of reflecting on the way in which she writes about it so she adds in notes and the way in which she perceived it and understood it and how it's changed and i think that's really interesting to hear from people who have had these experiences sort of years later to see how it continues to impact them how their thinking has changed um, how they were able to manage and deal with what happened to them i found that really interesting and the way she writes about it is very compelling it's like reading a story like a non-fiction um, it's very beautiful at times and she talks a lot about the experience in the context of herself and how she thinks about herself and love and her and value and things like that so i really i like I, that one really stuck with me the way that she talked about it um and the way that she reflected on her experience and how she had spoken about it um another one of the essays that i really liked i can't remember the title but it was looking at um the way in which women were responding to sexual assault and sexual harassment in buenos aires they sort of had these sort of talks or evenings where they'd all collect together and talk about their experiences women from all different backgrounds would join together to talk about it and they did this thing where they would ha someone would tell their story and then someone else would tell their story and build upon it and fill in the gaps so that you'd get sort of this more all-encompassing um embracing perspective of the female experience um rather than just sort of like what we get with sort of liberal white feminism and i really liked this idea of creating a collective memory and a collective narrative as a way to embrace lots of different people and sort of build it like a house and like fill in the gaps and construct it and sort of make the narrative or the experience like a living breathing beast like i could imagine this sort of i i love like oral history and collective memory and things like and collective narratives i love it i think it's so um compelling and um anchoring and like empowering to have this sort of collection of narratives of people like you and unlike you to support you and make you feel recognized and understood and supported i just i just love stuff like that and i think that that's quite a useful way to move forward to sort of have one person tell their story and the next person stand up and everyone bring it all together rather than just be focused on their own experience and learn from other people the idea of a unifying narrative is just really really like it just gets me like it, it just made me feel empowered and sort of 
less disenchanted than I frequently feel the idea of people all coming together to share their own story and the value of everybody's narrative um, informing something that means something to everyone and can embrace all people and recognize all people it might be utopian but like that just feels good to me and made me feel really excited and happy <laughs> um so yes the volume looks at things from lots of new angles it gives you a really good sort of jumping off point to learn more so the next one that i read um was bunny by mona awad also this was another ebook that i got from the library um yeah so this was when i wasn't feeling well and i wanted something that was kind of easier reading obviously i don't need to talk too much about this because i think everybody who is part of bookstagram or booktube um will be familiar with it and know the plot it is a dark academia book with sort of like a mean girls-esque group called the bunnies i did give it 3.5 stars um generally speaking i enjoyed it it was at times more compelling than others there is a lot of suspension of belief required for quite a, a large part of the storyline um which i just had to accept and kind of go with it was kind of so ridiculous like i couldn't i still don't really understand why the bunnies were doing what they were doing um but i kind of just writ that off and was like don't think about it too much just kind of enjoy it for what it is however the end did have quite a punch for me like i wasn't expecting it i was also ill for a different reason at that time and like really really tired so it really hit me and i felt emotional and i was like oh my god like i feel like on a normal day i wouldn't have enjoyed the ending as much as i did because i was very sensitive at the time but yeah what i did like about it is particularly towards the end and when it wraps it all up the way in which it is exploring loneliness and longing for friendship and how friendship and companionship can really open up your life um i, I liked i liked that part of it and the end did kind of hit me right in the heart um the writing style was very cringy um i kind of expected this because i find a lot of contemporary books the writing style kind of cringes me out which is why i don't read them too frequently because it just makes me feel a bit sick um particularly when making references to contemporary times um this one was very cringy i just kind of had to let that go and there's one particular thing that mona Awad does where she's like she must have said it, this like phrase about 50 times she'd be like this like so much this and i'm just like why do you keep using that sentence structure i don't understand like is it why i don't understand and yeah my last sort of thought on that is i don't understand why samantha couldn't just be friends with jonah the whole time and like like avoid all of the ag because he is a sweetheart and is lovely and i adore him and he's so cute and i just don't understand why she constantly rejected him then the next book well i call it a book i don't think you really can call this a book um we have femme fatale by guy de Maposson. i have no idea um so i bought this at the same time as bellamy by the same author I've been looking at that absolutely sassy man with that delicious moustache for a while um, and I just decided to buy it I think for a Christmas gift to myself I don't really know why and this kind of popped up and I had to get it because it's called Femme Fatale and um, Femme Fatale is one of my favourite songs as in the song by the Velvet Underground I obviously knew it had nothing to do with this and I love the trope of a Femme Fatale generally I think it's very interesting so I just had to get it like anytime I see something with like a slogan or a name or a reference to something I like even if it's completely unassociated I have to buy it um so yeah I did just buy it because of the Velvet Underground song what can we do um so this is four short stories all looking at um Parisian life and debauchery in the 19th century I'll give it two stars so whilst I generally do appreciate um Maupassant's general writing style and atmosphere it's dark and obviously very French which I like um I did uh I just found that this didn't really hold my attention it left basically no impression on me um yeah I just wouldn't recommend I wouldn't really bother even though it was only a two pounds I don't really see the point in it but but I hate short stories so I don't know why I did this to myself like I never enjoy them I or I don't I read quite a lot of relatively short books but I like longer books I like a lot of time with my characters I like to really sink into them um and as I've said I've got a really shitty attention span so weirdly enough like I need quite a lot to engage me and a short story just doesn't give me enough time to get connected and care um 
the last story was probably the best in my opinion which is laid to rest that was kind of funny but i wouldn't pay for it or rush to read it really um also we have some lesbian representation in here which i wasn't expecting granted not very good re lesbian representation that is actually kind of the topic of the femme fatale novel um not novel <laughs> short story so yeah it wasn't very good rep because it's basically saying that lesbians are femme fatales and romance lives because women um are only understandable or valuable within the context of male desire so yeah i didn't really enjoy this but never mind now i think we are on to the last book wow um and that is the naked civil servant by quentin crisp so this is a biography of quentin crisp who was homosexual in the 1930s and like openly homosexual in terms of the way he presented himself like it made things pretty obvious i suppose um oh this is this is the book that we have the red lipstick for because i'll read you from the back blind with mascara and dumb with lipstick i paraded the dim streets of pimlico i wore a fringe so deep that it completely obscured the way ahead this hardly mattered there were others to look where i was going i really really wanted to love this i really expected i would like the first couple of pages i was like mm, banging right in style i love it um and indeed there are a lot of anecdotes in here but in terms of the whole story i just never got into it i didn't want to pick it up it was a struggle to finish it there was like i said there's a lot of anecdotes and sort of funny moments but as a whole there isn't much driving force to this story i mean it's his biography like do, do we have do we have to have driving forces to our lives i don't know but as a story there was no sort of structure that really held it together and pushes you through it like you don't feel like the stakes are high or you're going anywhere or anything is going to happen i mean quentin crisp spends most of the time just faffing about in his room um and doing a few jobs and being sassy to people which is fine i love sass i enjoyed that part of it but as a whole the book did not compel me to read it i struggled to get through it I would have preferred just like a little quote book of bits and pieces like all the bits i've tabbed rather than the story within like that held it together it just didn't do it for me also we have the fact that quentin chris very much holds you distant as the reader and anyone in his life which i understand is kind of part of the point like he, as a means of self-protection and shielding he does kind of hold himself at a distance and is like this massive personality so you get a good sense for the personality that he is creating but less for the life or the person he really was, which is fine because that's kind of part of the point as well. But because of that and the story kind of being a bit demotivating, there just wasn't a lot to sort of grab hold of. And I understand it's his life. Like I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna hold it against him. But for me, this was just hard to read and I wouldn't really recommend you sitting down and reading it cover to cover. And I also personally don't like to pick in and out of books like that. That's not the way I like to experience books. I think possibly this would have been more compelling to contemporary audiences. I think this was published in the 70s. Um, so it feels like it would have felt like more of an expose. But if you are living in the 21st century and obviously um, LGBTQ plus culture is quite prevalent and is reasonably widely accessible if you're interested um it's easy to be familiar with a lot of the things that he's talking about so there's nothing really new to get from it historically it is important but, but yeah it just didn't offer anything new or compelling to me though i did enjoy the anecdotes and his sassiness it was fun um yes so that's all the books that i finished there were two more books that i started um one of them is anna karenina which you will be aware of um I'm on page 807. Uh, um, yeah, I uh, on this, I am enjoying it, but I did put it down quite a few times to pick up other stuff, just because, like I say, my attention span is not great. I couldn't sit and sort of solidly get through it. I needed something to break it up a bit. And then once I put it down, <laughs> I got very distracted. And then I had too many books on the go and I had to focus on getting those sort of out of the way to clear my mind. I'm actually doing sort of like another little challenge type thing at the moment that I'm working on so I haven't been able to pick this up in a while because I want to get that done first and I also had like an um an arc on NetGalley to read but um I'm hopefully gonna pick this up again sort of next week and I will finish it this month um generally speaking I'm enjoying it but some of the Levin scenes were getting a bit much for me and I just needed a bit more interest um 
I think I probably enjoyed this more the first time I started reading it. Now it doesn't do as much for me, but I do still think it's very solid and I will talk about it when I have finished it in my next wrap up. Uh, the next book is this big guy, which is The Story of Art by E.H. Gombrich. Um, this I'm reading because it's just kind of one of those key um, art historical texts. This was originally published a long old time ago. First published in 1950 and there have been lots of reprints and updated editions since then. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you will know about me, but um, art, I love art history. I would like to do my masters probably in art history, maybe in history, I don't know. Um, but I did not study it at uni, so I very much have to kind of self-learn. And whilst there are lots of parts of art history I'd say I'm relatively like clued up on the general whole sort of perspective I have many gaps so I'm kind of reading this to kind of build up my broader understanding um you have to remember this was first published in 1950 it's kind of like one of the sort of older key texts in the field so it's going to be limited in scope like globally limited um and things have moved on a lot more there are a lot of other perspectives to look at and you shouldn't just take everything he says for granted but you have to understand a wide number of perspectives and as one of the sort of canon in the field of art history i did want to read this again i've had to put this down for the challenge and the net galley um book i needed to review but i will be picking this up again next week as well so yes, those are all the books I read this month. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what your favourite book of January was. And if you have any recs for me, I'm always interested to hear them. So yes, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.